Welcome back everyone, my name is AJ and on today's video I am going to be showing you how to make this epoxy charcuterie board. Let's do it. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you take any bark you have off the piece. Epoxy won't really penetrate through that bark and it could fall off down the road. You don't want that. And if there's any voids on the inside that have bark inclusions or um, anything left inside of there, you wanna make sure that you've cleaned it out and kinda of tried to smooth the inside of it out as much as possible. That way you give the epoxy a good surface to adhere to. I used a combination of sandpaper, putty knives, and a scraper, and a utility knife. The utility knife was mostly just used to cut open a couple smaller voids that I wanted to fill with epoxy but wouldn't have taken it very well, um, would not have flowed down into the actual void. Then I took the piece over to my miter saw to cut it down to its rough length. You can also use a circular saw, jigsaw, whatever you guys have on hand. Um, anything that can cut straight, that's what you need. So this next part I know is going to generate a lot of questions so I'm just going to get in front of it. These are the acrylic handle templates that I used to trace the handle designs onto the charcuterie boards. I did not make these. I purchased these from uh, Jeff Mack Designs. I'll link his website down below. You can get these as just a tracing template, so you trace onto the piece and then cut it out with a jigsaw, or you can get them as a router template where they're thick enough to actually follow with a router. Now that you've got your handle traced onto the workpiece, I used a jigsaw to cut it out, and then I used my spindle sander to get rid of any burn marks and smoothen out the curves at the end. And for those of you who are worried about not having a spindle sander, I can say that it's a relatively cheap tool that will save you a lot of time. And if you choose to sand it by hand, I will pray for you because you're going to need it. So to get ready for my epoxy pour, I used Tyvek tape. It's a special kind of sheathing tape. There are a couple other brands, but it has to be some kind of sheathing tape like Tyvek tape. I made sure to carefully tape off any areas on the underside and the sides that the epoxy could leak from or leak out of. There's nothing worse than your epoxy leaking out of your, your form or out of your board when you're pouring it. It will make a mess and it'll be very hard to clean up. So take your time while you're taping and even you know use a lot of extra tape if you need to just to be sure, just to be safe. And make sure you press the tape down very firmly as well. Epoxy that I used is Total Boat High Performance Epoxy. This is a two to one ratio. I use the fast hardener, but I do not recommend using the fast hardener if you guys are doing anything that's smaller than like a surface void. You're gonna wanna go to like the medium or maybe even the slow hardener, only because the fast hardener makes the epoxy cure very, very quickly. And not only will it not give you a lot of working time, but it might actually set your workpiece on fire if you're not careful, and nobody really wants that. I used mica pigment to color the epoxy. Um, and in this case, it was the glossy blue pigment that I used. Once the epoxy was fully cured, I took off all of the tape and then I used a carbide scraper to scrape off any excess or overflow. I prefer scraping it as opposed to sanding it all because I think it saves a lot of time. Um, you can just sand it all down if you choose, but a carbide scraper is a relatively cheap investment and you'll use it all the time for glue, epoxy, whatever. Now that your board is scraped down, it's time to take it over and sand it. This is everybody's favorite activity, I know, but it must be done. Now, I sanded my boards up to 220 grit, and I also did a water pop. If you're not familiar with water popping, it's a great way to ensure that your boards stay smooth even after they get in contact with water. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab a spray bottle or a wet paper towel and wet the workpiece all around and then you're gonna to wanna to sand it back down again to 220 grit or whatever grit you're sanding to. What this does is it makes that grain pop because it's going to absorb that moisture. You're gonna then knock it down with sandpaper again so that the next time it comes in contact with moisture, the grain won't raise like it did the first time. Then I grabbed my palm router and I put a small round over on the handle side of the workpiece and I also broke the remaining edges by hand with sandpaper just to make sure there weren't any sharp edges. Now that your board is nicely sanded and detailed, it's time to finish it. Now there are a lot of different products that you can use to finish charcuterie boards and, and cutting boards and things of that nature. All of these finishes have to be food safe, which is the most important part. When choosing a food safe finish, there are a couple of different factors. Um, something as simple as food grade mineral oil is a great finish, but it does not provide a lot of water protection. It is however easy to rejuvenate if you need to do so. I prefer to use a finish such as walrus oil and I've used their cutting board oil before and also I've tried their furniture butter now, which is a mixture of an oil and a wax product from them. And I found that that had a really great smooth finish and the water beaded right off of it, which was awesome. And that's it guys, the charcuterie board is done. 
I wanna thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you found it informative and learned something, especially if you're going to be tackling your own epoxy projects. Hopefully this had some valuable tips for you. I do have one favor to ask of you all. If you're watching this video and you are not subscribed, please do. I am trying to crush that 1,000 subscriber count goal. It's been a goal of mine for a very long time and I need your guys' help to do that. So I would greatly appreciate if you can subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, make sure you comment them down below. Please like the video as well. That helps me out greatly and thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate your guys' support and I hope that I'll see you on the next video. Bye. And don't even think about going anywhere because there's some sick B-roll coming up. You're gonna wanna stick around for that. Peace.